before we begin this episode, I want to put in a quick word from our sponsor, me. We got the name for this podcast from the mission of Momentum Lab, our coaching program. We are both incubating the next generation of heroes and the next step in the evolution of consciousness. If you listen to the show, you're already a part of that process. Thank you. So if you haven't already, sign up for the newsletter to get insights, tools, and inspiration on living a purposeful, visionary, and impactful life. And if it ever dawns on you that that's easier to do with a community of excellence urging you on that it can make the difference in you achieving your personal goals, check out Momentum Lab. Okay, back to the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to 10,000 Heroes for another episode. I'm Ankur Shah Delight. Today we have a debrief episode with my buddy Nathan Ramos. And this is kind of a love letter to Nate because the, the interview with Katie Bowman was really, it's really, it's about movement. It's about how we relate to the mind and the body and how we go through life. And Katie's such an amazing teacher. This was the best I could do in terms of introducing Katie and Nate. Everybody gets to see it because Nate is just obsessed with movement. And you'll see, of course, he's, he's so excited about this interview. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed the conversation with Katie and this conversation with Nate. And of course, reach out, let us know any questions you have, anything you want to engage on. That's what we're here for. All right. Wow. Fantastic uh, conversation, let me say. Great. I'm not going to say it's my favorite, only because I say that every episode. And I'm practicing restraint. <laughs> practicing practicing. Integrity, <laughs> integrity, the power of my word, <laughs> some type of accuracy in the things that I say. Uh, but it was, it was up there. Yeah, fantastic. Let's jump yeah. in. I have some things that maybe I would have a little playful quarrel with her about. I think they're so high level and philosophical that's probably boring to at least you, if not our listener. <laughs> I think you got, you got me, you nailed me. I got your number. (laughs) Yeah. But let's jump in with this idea of movement literacy, because I think that's probably the most important thing in the conversation and something I care passionately about. I always like to check in with you after it's been a little, some time has passed since the conversation and just see if there's, are there any ghosts, artifacts that are still bouncing around in that beautiful head of yours? from this conversation what if you look back without you don't have to like nail it i don't want to put you on the spot i don't want to shame you or embarrass you in front of your listeners but what do you remember from this conversation with katie the first thing that comes to mind is that her dad is an air traffic controller (laughs) that's right and metabolizes adrenaline yeah yeah i mean to to me that's um I mean, that's just like an area of challenge for me. It's like how to use adrenaline properly. Interesting. And mm-hmm. just that, that that Katie and her dad both share that ability mm-hmm. to metabolize adrenaline and not um not be thrown off mm-hmm. by by being in the moment, even when the moments are a bit heightened. Tricky. Yeah. Yeah, or triggering. I think you guys were talking about in that part of the conversation. Yeah. That's the part that I think about. You know, most most of these interviews when I do them, I'm like in this zone and then I just like forget even the most minute details. But there's always like a few elements that change me. And that's that's what changed me. Yeah. I would expect you to forget the minute details. But um but I think, yeah, the things that like pop like this. And then I wonder because there's some urgency to her work. Mm. I mean, oh, yeah. Coming with a message. Oh, that's the other wondering. that's the other yeah. thing. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, the please. whole you know, I, I've known Katie for a while. She's an amazing person to know. She's like a she's like an incredible presence in someone's life or friendship. So mm, okay. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. But but her and I so I know she's like anti sedentarism like that that part I, I knew. Mm-hmm. But her whole thing like bringing it to my awareness that sedentarism is a problem that the World Health Organization is concerned with, and this whole like that it's not just on the fringe. It's not just you and Katie that are concerned about this but the bureaucrats are into it and they're like, oh, this is a problem. I love that. <laughs> well, yeah, the, yeah, the bureaucrats, the researchers, the doctors. Yeah. I mean, it is, it, there's the, the, it, it's pretty conclusive. I mean, I, I, I think my mother's the one that said it to me that sitting's more dangerous than smoking. I don't know if that 
line happened in the podcast. I don't remember it, but that's something people throw around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's incredible to think of. I mean, obviously, hard, hard for me to believe that's true, literally. Yeah, no, but literally, I mean, that's what the research says. Maybe I do a little bit more of the legwork so we can actually put that study she's referencing and that that uh, people are referencing with that in the show notes. I think it's be helpful to lend some credibility because it's it does. It sounds like an exaggeration, but uh, sitting will kill you, man. I'm standing you're, up right now. You're standing right now. Oh yeah, yeah. me too. We have yeah. standing desks. I'm, I'm safe. But, yeah. 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 So sedentarism, anti sedentarism is an interesting way to say that. I like, I like the, um, for some reason, I just, I, I think I resonate more with the positive stating of that. And that this idea of movement literacy really mm -hmm. appeals to me. Mm -hmm. In the Feldenkrais work, movement is fundamental to development. We, we learn through moving. Like being and a baby and growing to an adult. Being a baby. Kind of so we like the, the approach to Feldenkrais literally starts in what we call the primals. Just um, even turning, right? You remember there's a, there, was a, there was a phase in your development where you just, before you could crawl, just learning to turn. Oh, I remember that with my, with, with, with my baby. There's like this whole thing of like, oh, have they learned how to flip over yet? Which, which I didn't know was a thing. And then it became a thing. And she learned. She did it. She didn't learn. I don't know. She did it once and then couldn't do it again for months. And then she could do it consistently. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you, you know, something we talk about is part of the problem of where some of these gaps in development emerges when we put these children on a timeline. And so as, as, as parents or educators, we have these things that we, okay, we know this happens in a sequence. So at so many months, they're going to turn at so many months, they're going to be able to lift their head in an orientation to gravity. And then they're going to be able to sit and they're going to right and then crawl and yada, yada, yada. And there's such an obsession to have our children on the right track to success um, that it actually re delays development because the child is then having to perform. And I mean, this implicates that our whole model of education. So I, I think when we say movement literacy, when we say movement literacy is to understand that it's really fundamental. And so that's when I was saying, I might quarrel with her about some things is this idea that we have a body, like some tool we take out of the shed and, Polish and sure, you know, then we get into some like spiritual kind of non dual, you know, are we our body? We, we're just a con we're, we're, we're consciousness, right? We're, we're consciousness and this is not my body. This is, these are not my sensations. I am consciousness. But really at that level, you're not, it's, you're also not a personality, right? And so at any level that you have a tool or have a body or have anything at all, you are that body. You just went it into is. that philosophy thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I just, <laughs> I did. I was trying to be <laughs> sneaky. But, uh, but listen to me when I say, I think that movement literacy is fundamental. Maybe that's just um, plain language enough. I think it's actually fundamental. It's not just an accessory. It's not something we should all do to kind of just be better, or more um, optimized or healthier. That is really fundamental to our experience of life and our capacity but, in life. But you brought that up after the sedentarism mentioned. So how is it related to that? It's like, if we don't get the movement literacy, then, then yeah. what happens? Then we start smoking or sitting, dying. <laughs> if we don't get the movement literacy, what happens? I, I don't think it's so simple that we could just derive a set of outcomes. Um, but but scare me a little bit. Like if 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 you and Katie are like, hey, we have to have, you know, what's the what's the consequence? What's the risk? Okay, so um, we could just go in different domains of life. Um, lack of natural movement. Lack of um, free and easy breathing. Um, can res result in pain, results in disease and disease. 
right? So I mean, I think there's just, yeah, fundamentally there are health, health outcomes uh, that are negative if we if we don't develop uh, an awareness about our body, if we don't learn how to move well and efficiently, smoothly. Yeah. Okay. And that resonates with what Katie writes in, in her books. You so know? I think that's I think that's a basic level. But I think there is something more in terms of our potential in our the development of ourself is what I'm saying. Um, our our creativity, our our capacity to communicate, to feel, to express, to be resilient, um, which you guys start talking about towards the end, end of the conversation, this idea of um um being in a really heightened situation and having options. Mm -hmm. mm. So I, I think the idea of options, this is something that you guys talk a lot about. She uses kind of in different contexts, but this is something Moishe talks about all the time. It's something that comes up in every Feldenkrais class or choices and the capacity to choose. Um, in fact, in, in a recent Feldenkrais teaching, our, our teacher said that might be the very definition of resilience, is that when you're disturbed or you're disrupted, how many options, how many pathways do you have back to coherence? And we're talking about this thing, movement literacy, but what I'm saying is really just development of the human being having choices at hand. So one thing that Moishe was very fond of saying is that to be human, you have to have three ways of doing something because any machine or animal could do or not do. But there was something uniquely human about this creative act to generate a novel third way of doing something. So this whole idea of options, and that I think what's really interesting in your conversation with Katie is this modern dilemma and it's not just black and white like modernity bad okay it's not it's not i'm not saying that. i don't think katie's saying that but you do see that while we kind of able to let some of these tools innovations technology comforts like a chair something as simple as a chair just to take up some of the slack it relieves us of the opportunity to develop that skill or develop that capacity or develop that resilience on our own. And then we lose that option. And then we don't have that option. And actually, literally, like she's saying with the, the metaphor of this cast, is that we you know, you think about this myofascial net, you know, that's that's keeping all of our, our all the water from spilling out and being a puddle at our feet. And it's, 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 you know, so it's facilitating all these cellular processes, it thrives on movement. Right. So, and it, and it, and it becomes, it becomes stiff and calcified. You get all these adhesions along, along these, along the, you know, through the body that um, really it, it takes the shape. The body takes the shape of the chair. And then you're walking around in the shape of a chair. And you can think of how many options now are cut off to you, not just athletically, though, is, is my point. Not just athletically, not just, your health, but that your posture is a gesture, right? Your posture is a gesture to the world. It's, it's just communicating something uh, really core about who you are and how you feel. And it's also gives you a set of choices for how you're going to act on the world and affect the world and respond to the world. So that, that's what I mean without getting too philosophical. It's just this thing that um, a kind of a, 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 how do we differentiate? You know, the, the body is something that we are and something that, or, or, or just some tool in the shed, you know? There's, there's something I want to ask you about. So I, I like this idea that, you know, we evolve with tools. We've, we've had chairs for a long time, presumably. Yeah. We have like other modern tools now that we haven't had for so long. We have this dependence on them or we get used to them we somehow co-evolve with them so that when we don't have the tool, we're fundamentally changed and there's negative consequences to that. So I feel like if I followed that, I think about GPS 
I love directions. I love having a sense of direction. I love being able to find my way. I like getting lost. I like getting found. GPS really, it's it's very helpful. Like I, I use GPS. I use driving directions. And if you're too dependent on it, like if you if you don't know how to survive without GPS, you've like lost this sense of orientation, sense of like which way is north? How do I get home? You know, we we even just stop paying attention. People just don't look because they're like, oh, I'll just use the GPS, right? There's this mm. un- unhealth in my mind, this unhealthiness about it. Is that is that related? Like, how is that different than like the chair thing, or is, is it the same in your mind? Oh no, it's, I think it's related, and I think this is maybe the most interesting thing about your conversation with Katie. And I, I don't, maybe you can help me articulate it. Um, this dependency on technology. Um, maybe I can say it like this what are we without the imperative what are we as humans without the imperative so she talks about you know you you don't have to go out to get food you don't have to go through the process and expend the calories and muster the ingenuity to get a meal um you don't have to go through the trouble of kind of wayfinding or using the stars to navigate but you might like to. So I think it's really puts us at a a very interesting moment in our evolution where all of that development's up to us. It's like our buddy Ken, our buddy Ken, who just so, he he just loves this survival training. He's been doing it more than a decade. Does the Tom Brown tracking school, drop them off on an island, they survive with a pair of sticks and stuff like that. Now, okay, maybe some part of them does believe that there's some post-capitalism collapse, zombie apocalypse, where all of a sudden these skills are essential again. But I would say that more immediate than that is, is it gives him something, right? It gives him something that um, expresses something really core about who he is and what he wants to be in the world. So we do have the, it, it, it's a choice, again, it's a choice, right? If, if we learn to farm or we learn to hunt or we learn to get our own food or share our own food or raise our own food, any of these capacities that have kind of been um, taken away from us in a sense by the comforts we've been given, we didn't really have a choice in that, right? And now to get the thing that it requires some agency, and some actual conscious direction. I think that's and I think that's the thing is it requires now of you some conscious choice, some direction on your part to learn that adaptive skill. Right? Um that's what I think. And so uh just to take it back, may, maybe none of that clarified that for you, but um it, this this coevolution with with tools, obviously, it's like you guys talk about the specialization of the economy and all these wonderful things that we're a- able to generate now as a, a, a through culture and society because of our tools, because we can specialize, because now you can do a podcast and have all these wonderful conversations and people can listen to that and become inspired and try all these cool things that you're discovering through your conversations. You can only do that because you're not spending so many hours in the field every day, right? And at the same time, you want to go spend time in your garden. There's something that calls you to, to dig in the dirt and, and, and be part of that experience. Um, and then on the negative side, what happens if we kind of collectively choose that experience less and less, and then we sort of lose that as, as an option? It's, it's not something that's part of our heredity anymore. We don't receive that as either lore or training or it's not it's not within us and it's it's something more and more it becomes more and more remote. I mean, I mean something I think a lot about is is like organic produce. Right? Is you have to pay extra for them not to touch it. Some <laughs> kind of backward right? Yeah. It's like don't yeah. do don't, do you want us to put all this shit on here? No, don't please. Okay. That's that's five dollars extra. <laughs> And that's the situation. So, you know, we're this amazing system, right? Of systems, the human body and the human being. We, we, 
we we do have a chance to choose and i think that to me is what resonated most about what katie was saying mm. is that there, there's a choice in front of us and um when, when we choose movement we choose movement as a lifestyle as a, a, a pathway of expression um when we choose it as a way to develop ourselves it, just, it it gives us so much it just opens itself up because here we are we find ourselves here you know right at the center of our experience of our, all our senses is our is our body is our embodiment doing so then, you know 15 I mean, repetitions and maybe this is yeah. reductive but what is the um, what's the prescription like what's the suggestion what's the like I, yeah let's say yeah i i'm sold i want to do it what yeah. do I do? You pay attention. And, and so you pay attention to the sensations that, you, that what you can notice. So is you bring some attention to attention itself and you see what, what do I notice in, in the feeling of my body, just you standing there right now, you see like how, how aware are it, What differences can you notice? For instance, in which foot you might be standing on more than the other mm -hmm. or the length of one arm over the other this type of noticing making distinctions and finer and finer distinctions is how we can bring more awareness to this to this this thing of movement and i, I think movement you know movement but there's also stillness right which is 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 in relation to movement so i think it's 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 really important uh, on one level just to have the superficial conversation, I mean, not superficial to disparage it, but just to say, people get out there, go for some, go for a walk, get out of your chair, move. But I also think there's a, a, a deeper, richer conversation that's available about who we are and how we develop as human beings. I knew when I was doing this interview, I knew it was like, in a way it was for you. <laughs> Cause I know you, you love this. So it's yeah, really, I love this, sh love this shit. Yeah. I was, I was waiting for this, this moment for, for months. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious Are, for you. I mean, you, you do move a lot though. Encore. I know sometimes you, you've had this sort of like mixed. Um... Yeah. But I almost, I almost move out of like, um, I'm just not good at sitting still. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know like no one is no one is <laughs> no see that's the thing that's one of the things right that's one of the things that's pathological yeah we so put, this, put this children is... in these chairs and we tell them sit still and then if they can't sit still there's something wrong with them and then we give them a diagnosis but nobody should sit still for eight hours a day it's insane it's abusive So then th this is where I think the movement literacy can happen way. It's like, it's like, I think Katie's saying, let's design for it. Let's do ergonomics. Let's do the, let's, let's change our environment. And, you know, also let's change the way we do things. Let's change the way yeah. we do. Not just education. the architecture, but the whole like social system. Yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing that wouldn't touch, you know, our, our, how we relate um how we love how we make love how we you know how we how we engage with each other with life itself you know you this was something you know this is a, a fantasy of yours if i can reveal this is is you, you teaching jasmine math during a hike on mount baldy <laughs> yeah am i am i right this would be like yeah. a peak experience for you this is like oh yeah one of the hi highest I and mean, think about like how what an incredible thing that would be to share and what if that was just commonplace what if that's how people learn math you know um and of course it's, it's part of this is just daydreaming right because it would require such a mobilization of resources and well so much coordinating I mean, but there's people you could try it on small levels right and there's people yeah. like katie and mm -hmm. that's what she's devoting her life to, you know, not only in her own personal life, but also like that's her movement, you know, and she's got hundreds of thousands of people that are involved in this movement that has totally changed their lives and for in exactly this. So it's, 
I mean, and that's what I love about this, this line of work, like this, mm-hmm. the whole, like being in the inspiration business is that you mm-hmm. meet people where it's not just a pipe dream where it's like, yeah. all right, they, they took that seriously. And mm-hmm. like, that's, that's the mission that they're executing on every day. Yeah. All right, folks, that's my story, and uh, I'm not going to stick to it. In fact, if anybody has uh, I'm not, at all, I guarantee is to never stick to my story. And if anybody has a different opinion uh, than me or Encore or anybody here on this podcast, we'd love to hear it. And we're always uh, very happy to change our opinion about just about anything, um, except how we feel about each other. I think you, you'd have to go a long way to convince me that I don't love Encore very much and, uh, and that I'm not very grateful for all these wonderful uh, conversations and discussions that we get to have. So here's what you do. If you want to get more involved, you want to be in communication with us, sign up for our newsletter. It's called Lab Notes, notes from the field of all these experiments, all these wonderful people are running, including ourselves. So if you'd like to receive that, check out the link, sign up and get involved. Yeah, I'm I'm super stoked about that because we're having a couple of live events coming up soon. And Do you want to so, tell us about that right now, or? Uh, yeah, I mean, one is a we're gonna have a, a live cocktail hour with Micah and Melvin, who were on the show a couple of weeks ago. I am definitely gonna be there. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. And then we're gonna have a live goal setting workshop for people that are interested in like connecting the now and like their long term goals. So there's there's more information on that if you sign up for the lab notes. You'll super never cool. miss a single awesome event yeah i wouldn't yeah i wouldn't want to miss either i'm not going to miss either of those all right thank you all thank you dear listener for your time and attention as always we'll talk to you soon hi everyone this is martich san your producer audio editor and sound designer in chief for the Ten Thousand heroes team i just wanted to take a minute to thank you for listening to our show let me tell you a couple of things Ten Thousand heroes is brought to you by the team at momentum lab pierre does our artwork dj plainview composed our theme music and i handle all the editing production and sound design please if you like the show follow it rate it tell your friends about it and write to us that really help us make the impact we want to make and now we are closing this episode with a word from our main sponsor who also happens to be our host anchor and now a message from our sponsor me again 10,000 Heroes is brought to you by Momentum Lab. I normally refer to Momentum Lab as a coaching program or a goal accelerator, but it's really more like a master's degree in life. When you join Momentum Lab, we help you get crystal clear on what it is you actually want, who you want to be, what you want to do, and how you want to contribute. And then we get into all the painful details of what has been blocking you this whole time. And then we give you the knowledge, the tools, and the support you need to get there. Sometimes that's a spreadsheet, sometimes it's a mindset hack, sometimes it's a lecture, and sometimes it's a hug. Our only attachment is to your higher self. So when you're ready to be the next version of yourself, in your business, for your family, or just for your own sense of fulfillment, draw me a line. Bye!